All through this course I have been using objects of the string class and the examples, so I'm sure you have a good idea of how Java strings work. But the string class is very special to Java, and I think I need to go over what strings do. The string class is known to the Java compiler. Anytime you insert a string of characters surrounded with double quotes, the compiler creates a string object for you. You can explicitly create a new string object or just put in a quoted string. The resulting code comes out exactly the same. A string object is immutable. That means once you create a string object, you can't change it. The contents of the object remain the same as long as that object exists. The only way to modify a string is to create a new object with the modified contents. For example, String concatenation just creates a new string object. Look at this code. The string reference first name is constructed and holds the characters FRED. The second reference is created and holds nothing. In the third line of code, a new string object is created by the plus sign. It's made up of the contents of the first string and the new string created from the quoted line. The address of this new string is then stored in the reference. Now, here's some code that does the same thing in a different way. This code works exactly the same way. The plus sign creates a new string object, and the address of that object is stored in the reference. The original string in the str reference is released to the garbage collector. Here's another. The same thing happens again. A new string is created by the plus equals operator. Then the address of the new string is stored in the reference. The original string is released to the garbage collector. Now it may seem to you that one way of doing this is more efficient than another, but that's not really the case. As long as you know how it should work conceptually, the compiler will figure out the most efficient way of actually doing things. The optimizer will make it skip some of the intermediate steps. Anything in Java can be converted directly into a string. You can do this with a cast. You can do it with a concatenation operator, the plus and plus equal. For example, if a string is discovered on one side of a plus sign, the item on the other side of the plus sign, whatever it is, will be converted to a string, and the plus sign will then generate a string object by combining the two. All of the Java fundamental types can be converted to a string by code in the compiler. Everything else is an object, and every object has a toString method that will be called to make the conversion. Remember, with your classes, this conversion may not be what you would like, so you may need to override it with your own toString method and fix that. There are some special characters that you can include inside a quoted string. If you precede a character with a backslash, then the character that follows it takes on a special meaning. When used this way, the backslash is known as the escape character. For example, a backslash followed by a digit indicates that the digits are octal. You won't see this one very much. This actually is something that was left over from the early days of the C programming language. The letter U followed by four hexadecimal digits is interpreted as a Unicode character. This one you will see a lot. The characters in Java are all 16-bit Unicode characters, and this is the only way that you have of writing some of them. You can use the escape character to include a single quote as a quoted character or as a member of a string. You can also escape the double quote character if you need to include one inside a quoted string, and you can include the escape character itself. A double backslash will result in a single backslash being a part of the string. This will be translated into the backspace character, and this is a form feed, and this is the new line character. It usually translates into a line feed character. And this is a carriage return, and finally, the tab character. The string class is immutable, so there are no methods that you can use to make changes to the contents. But there is another class that you can use to do that sort of thing. The string buffer class has some methods that you can use to manipulate the string of characters that it contains. For example, it has a collection of append methods that will convert anything to a string of characters and append it to the internal string. You can insert, extract, and replace one character at a time. 
You can search for substrings and insert substrings. In fact, there are a number of insert methods, so you can insert just about anything at any point you want in the string. You can use this class to build any strings of characters you would like, and then convert the final result into a Java Lang string object.